Hello and thank you for joining me today. So we're in Cricut Design Space right now and I'm going to make a monogram letter for my granddaughter. She turned 14 and I just thought that I would do up like a little vase with a, a flower in it and I thought it'd be cute to put her monogram on there. There are fonts that you can choose to make the monogram out of but they're too swirly and stuff for what I wanted so what I'm going to do is I clicked on the text feature and I'm going to go under the font and I'm going to go under French script and that's this one here and I'm just going to type the letter J and as you can see it's got swirls and stuff but it's not overbearing so now the next step I need to do is I need to cut the letter J in half so I'm going to go over to my shapes and I'm going to click on the square and all I'm going to do is I'm going to place the box where it's approximately in the middle of the J. So to me right about there looks good. So I'm just going to slide this over and I'm going to cover up everything and then I'm going to select both the J and the box and I'm going to hit slice. So what that's going to do is it's going to separate the J, the top from the bottom. Now these pieces we can just get rid of, we don't need them. Now what we need, I would like to do is make a line above the bottom part of the J and below the top part of the J. So I'm just going to take a square again and I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. And I'm going to bring this and I'm going to place it just on the edge of that top part of the J. I'm going to unlock the box and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to make a line that goes just past the edges of the letters. Uh, I think that's a little too thick. Make, there we go. There, that's better. So I'm just going to line those up and actually I'm going to use the align feature and choose center horizontally and that way it lines everything up the way it should be. So now that those two are selected I'm going to go down to the bottom right and I'm going to click on weld and that will weld those two together. Now actually I'm going to back up one second so I'm just going to back up and I'm going to take that weld out because I want to duplicate this line. So if you click on the line you can either go to the top right or you can right click and click duplicate. So now I have two lines that are identical in length and width and now I can weld those two together. So I'm going to follow the same procedure for the bottom part of the J. I'm going to see if I can make sure that these are lined up. Hopefully this will work. Yeah, no. That went over way too far. So basically what you're wanting to whoops, what you're wanting to do is to have your bottom of your letter match up with the top. And so because this kind of goes on a bit of a slant, I've just moved it up closer so I can make sure that the placement is going to be lined up because nothing worse than not having things lined up. So to me that looks good. So I'm just going to move this out of the way, select these two and click weld. So now I have my J with a space in between where I can put a, a name. So I'm just going to highlight them both and I'm just going to align them, align center and now everything looks smooth. Not quite. What's going on here? There we go. There, that looks good. Now the next step is to create the word that goes inside. So I'm just going to move this over for a second. So I'm going to click on the text box and I'm going to change my font to one that I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It's this Bod Bodani, Bod Bodani, I don't know, this one, um, MT Black. And I'm going to type my granddaughter's name. Whoops, I want that all with capitals. And 
now I can take her name and place it just inside here and line it all up so it's just the way I want it. Just like that. I'm going to highlight it all and I'm going to weld it together. The reason I'm welding it is that when I go to make it, I want this all to cut out as one piece. I don't want to have to try to piece it together. So my vase that I'm going to be putting this on is quite small. So I'm going to have a look and see. I think two inches is too big. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty darn sure it is. So let's go 1.5. And I'm just going to measure real quick here. And that's up just over three. I think I think that will work just fine. Okay, so we're just going to click on the Make It button. And that will take us to our next screen. And you can see that it's laid it out and everything is together. And so we're not going to have to piece anything together. And now I'm going to click on Continue. And I'm using just regular vinyl and I, I very seldom change my pressure I guess maybe if your blade starts getting dull or it's not cutting but I just leave mine on default and now I'm ready to go so I will change my camera over and we'll proceed on with the next step all right so I've got my piece of vinyl ready to go it's just a scrap piece and I'm just gonna load it to the top right hand corner of my light grip mat and we will load the mat in. Now I usually kind of just hold on to the end of it here before I push the button. It just helps for it to go in straight. You don't want your mat going in crooked. Okay so now we're all ready to go. We can press on the flashing C and then the Cricut will cut the vinyl. So here we go, we have our piece all ready to go. I flip it, easiest way that I found is to flip it over and to pull the backing off of the vinyl. And as you're pulling it, go nice and slow. If you see any pieces popping up, then all you're going to do is just push it back down and get it to lay down nice. So here's our vase. I'm gonna put the J right down near the bottom. I think right in this area. So we'll just kind of get over top of it here and lay it down. Ooh, that was close. All right, let's try it this way. You just want to get it on there straight and then take your finger is what I do and just push it around. Get around all those little curves and stuff. You can take your tool, your scraper, and just kind of push it down. And now we're just going to lift it off. And again, you want to go slow. And I'm just going to take my transfer tape and put it back onto this little backer here. And we can use that again. And there we go. A personalized little vase. So now what I'll do is I'll take some little rocks and stuff or some stones and put a little flower in there and I think it'll be cute sitting on her dresser in her bedroom. All right, so we've got our vase with our monogram and I went and dug out some white rocks that I had in my stash. I just put them on this paper because they're, they seem to let off this fine, fine dust. I didn't want it to get everywhere. Um, anyway, so I have these rocks that I purchased from the dollar store and then I have these little flowers that again I purchased from the dollar store and I've already gone ahead and used my wire cutters and just trimmed them down so that they will be a, a more appropriate size for the vase. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a few of these rocks and 
get them in the vase and it's gonna be noisy and for that I apologize. All right, give them a little bit of a shake, kind of let them settle. And now I'm going to go ahead and place my flowers in, in here because if you've ever tried to stick these into rocks, it's almost impossible. Ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna tuck these in here. And that should be good. And now I'm just going to fill in around them with the rocks. So this will help hold the flowers in place. And plus it'll give it a nice decorative look to it. Rocks flying everywhere. And just keep rotating it is what I'm doing, just so that I can get the rocks all around and to try to keep the flowers in there nice and straight. Kind of shake it once in a while just to help all the rocks settle in so there's no holes or gaping spots, gaping holes. Okay. This side, give it another little shake. I think maybe a few more and we should be, then we'll be done. All right. There we go. Just gonna give that a little bit of a shake. Make sure you put your hand over top of the hole so you don't end up with rocks everywhere. There. I think that looks pretty. Just to put some little color in there. I think that looks nice. Just arrange it however you want it. There. Of course, I could sit here and play with these all day, but anyways, you get the idea. There we go. So now I think I'm gonna go find some ribbon or um, something to go around the top here. All right, so I went and found some twine and I think that'll look cute, just kind of wrapped around the top. So I'm just going to take some twine and just start wrapping it around. I don't know how many times. I don't know, we'll just kind of around there a few times. I think that'll be good. And then I'll just take my scissors and cut that off. And then we'll just tie a little bow. Tie a knot first. Snug that in there. We'll wrap it around. And I'm just going to get that as tight as I possibly can. Do you guys ever have troubles tying bows or knots by yourself? I do. Oh, we'll just tie a little bow in this now. Just to give it a little, a little something. And of course it's gonna be crooked and upside down because that's just how things go, you know. What do you think? I think it turned out kind of cute. Of course, you know, I'll probably sit here and play with the flowers some more, but you know, you know how it goes. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's just a quick one and I really love to see some of your projects, whatever it is you're making, whether it be this or anything else, feel free to share on my Facebook page, Krista So Crafty. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Happy crafting.